this week after the very first question on the issue of immigration that is right there in his wheelhouse this week as you'll see he veers off topic several times watch well, first of all, she wants to give amnesty, which is a disaster and very unfair to all of the people that are waiting in line for many, many years. We need strong borders. First, let me respond as to the rallies. She said people start leaving. People don't go to her rallies. There's no reason to go. They're coming in illegally. Drugs are pouring in through the border. We have no country if we have no border. People don't leave my rallies. We have the biggest rallies, the most incredible rallies in the history of politics. The single biggest problem is heroin that pours across our southern borders, just pouring and destroying their youth. And what what's going on here, you're going to end up in World War III, just to go into another subject. What they have done to our country by allowing these millions and millions of people to come into our country. Now, I want to build the wall. We need the wall. The Border Patrol, ICE, they all want the wall. We stop the drugs. We, we shore up the border. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And once the border is secured, at a later date, we'll make a determination as to the rest. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. If she becomes president, this country doesn't have a chance of success. Not only success, we'll end up being Venezuela on steroids. Yes. Wow, that was a whopper. That was a whopper. But uh, let's continue. Let's see here. Good. All right, joining us now, he's on the set in the spin room himself. Did you have fun? I had a good time. I think it was our best debate ever. I thought it was really good. We had three against one, but I anticipated. Let's talk about that. Three against one, and all of her radical positions they leave on the table yeah no we had a lot of uh, a lot of negative kind of stuff look I saw on your show last night they had a hundred percent positive coverage on ABC and I had 94 percent negative coverage 93 93 percent negative I exaggerated you got an extra percent yeah. non negative um, as you were with her tonight to think that we come out of this debate and we have no answer to her co-sponsoring the Green New Deal, $93 trillion, yeah. I say the end of capitalism, to come out of this, you know, government-run health care and no answer to eliminating private health insurance. The well, fact we, we brought them all up. You know, every one of the things of that you, up. we brought it all up. And I also ended with, why hasn't she done it before? Why didn't she fix, you know, she's there complaining. Why didn't she fix all these Were things? Were you really that she's willing to leave with? the stage and, and go home if she was going to go fix it in Washington? No, you know what? I would have left. I would have said, go home and fix it. I'll leave with you, okay? Mm -hmm. But she doesn't, she's not going to fix it. So she's complaining about all the stuff that's wrong with the country, and they've been there for three and a half years. And I put that, I wanted to save that for my last little summation. And I actually mentioned in there, too. I sort of think maybe I shouldn't do a second debate. What's your answer? she lost. She wants it because she lost. Do you have an answer? Well, I don't know. I have to think about it. But if you won the debate, I sort of think maybe I shouldn't do it. Why should I do another <laughs> debate? She immediately said, we want another debate. That's, you know what happens when you're a prize fighter and you lose? You immediately want a new fight. You want a rematch. You want a rematch. The guy that won is sort of happy and thinking about it. Would you be inclined to say yes or you Maybe don't know? if it was on a fair network, I would do that. But that's, that's when I smack the shit out you. I smack the shit out That's shit. when. Sanders. I think it would be fair. You would be fair, actually. I would be you fair. Know the truth. I'd let you both talk. I'd let you go at each other. I thought they would be oh. fair. They weren't. But I felt very comfortable. Yeah. We have the best policy. She has no policy. You know, one thing that interested me, because I've known you for a long time, and one of the things that I, I was watching in you tonight is that you were just... You are all business. You know, a lot of times when you're at your rallies no, or we do a town hall... Yeah, Sean, they're destroying our country. Is that there's, what it was? Is yeah, it the seriousness nothing, of the there's moment? There's nothing to smile about. You know, I, I can, I'm a good smiler, <laughs> but there's nothing to smile about. They're destroying. We have 21 million people that have been released into our country, and many of them are criminals and terrorists and, and people Lincoln, from Riley, mental institutions. Rachel Moore, you know, Jocelyn Nungary. He's, he's most comfortable in front of these, you know, people like this that just say yes to everything he says, no pushback. Not even one question. He didn't push back once, Sean Hannity, on anything, you know? Uh, 
Yeah, he and he's just going to let him pretend that he didn't get his ass served to him uh, the other night. Um, yeah, this is wild. Well, Dad, I, you know, I list all these names yeah, I know. on the show of people murdered, people raped, people victims of violent crime, names a lot of people never heard of. You've called Lake and Riley's family. I you, did. You, I was with them. I was with him. Who else do you met? Other families. You met the families of. I met them all. Afghanistan. Nungary. I met. I met. You met Nungary. Yeah, I met uh, five or six of them. Not even talking about the 13 soldiers that were killed in Afghanistan. The families of the 13 soldiers, which Biden won't even talk to, and he's the one that caused their death. Just as if he had a pistol in his hand, he and her caused their death. Just as if literally they had a gun in their hand. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. When you're yeah, it's pretty amazing. That's that's Sean Hannity for you. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. That's his pushback. <laughs> in a situation like that, what is going through your mind? What is what goes what goes on behind the scenes? How do you prepare for your debates? Well, I think you sort of yeah. I always say I've been preparing all my life for these debates. Ah, uh, no specific answer. He's been preparing all his life for this debate. <laughs> It's, you know, you can't go in like she did. She goes into a room and she memorized lines, more or less. What? I thought I got one cute one. I'm talking when I said, I'm talking when she started interrupting well, me. Well, she said that to Mike I Pence. I wanted to I'm get speaking. even for that. You know, yeah. that was not very nice what she did. But no, I thought it was, uh, we're getting we're getting great reviews. It's interesting that. We're getting great reviews. No, man. People hate you, bro. People hate you. One thing, one line that really stuck out that did make me laugh out loud is when you said you're going to send her a MAGA hat. There are a lot of positions now. All of a sudden, she's come over to your side. She's been against the border wall. She's right. been against... Ta There's only one problem. Yeah. If she ever won immediately from the day after that election, everything would go back to confiscate your guns and forget about oil and everything else. You know, they were cutting back on oil way back. They got rid of uh, Anwar. The biggest oil site, perhaps, in the world, in Alaska. They did things that are so bad and so destructive. It's always so bad. And so, so was not a particular amount of bad. So was just general. You know, it gives you no idea of what he's talking about, but he uses it all the time. But energy prices started doubling up, and she immediately went back to the Trump plan. But I would have been now four times higher than they are right now because that was three and a half years ago. Right. When she cut it, she cut everything out. She went to wind and went to all this other stuff that doesn't work from an economic standpoint and even a visual standpoint. I don't get the wind. You take these gorgeous plains and deserts and all this stuff. They put these windmills up. They go up like a 30-story building in some cases. They destroy everything. They cut out all, and the environmentalists say, aren't they wonderful? But it's the most expensive form of energy, and it's never going to do for our country. So if we look at the issues on the economy, on immigration, on law and order, on energy, and America's role in the world, yeah. um, is there covered. anything you can point to that you would say they have been successful on? No. They have been unsuccessful at everything. And even the economy, I said, as part of the economy, You've let 21 million people, more than that, I think, with all the gotaways. By That's the way, killing our economy. Known terrorists, and we do have the murders and the rapes and the yep. violent crimes. Oh, and you haven't seen anything yet. Where do you see it in the months to come? You know what scares me, and I've said this on the air, is by having open borders, unvetted illegal immigrants, that I don't think it's a matter of if, I think it's a matter of when that What's this country is going to be attacked. <laughs> if you look at uh, <laughs> spring. <laughs> Sean Hannity. He's a second generation immigrant and he's paranoid about immigrants. He he sees immigrants everywhere you turn, illegal immigrants everywhere. And he's a second generation uh, immigrant himself. This is so funny. He's leading the charge for the anti-immigrant charge. Field, Ohio, look at what's happening there. You look at Aurora in, in yeah, Colorado. Colorado, these beautiful little towns and little cities, small cities, they're being taken over by illegal migrants. I mean, they're people that poured in and they have weapons like our military doesn't have. Oh. You know, they have AK-47s. They have weapons like our military. Anybody calling the local police and asking them that? Dumbass. Doesn't have. And you know, some sheriff oh, in one of these towns where 
He's got oh, two he's deputies. Lying, and right. they, they're not into he's this. There's lying. no way they can protect the people from this. But look at what's going on in Springfield today. It's Nobody's ever seen anything yeah. like it. Uh, we really appreciate it. I know your people are calling for you to uh, roll. Uh, what made you come to the spin room? I just felt Yo. I wanted to. I was very happy with the result. It's a very unfair. Look at who his people are. These two clowns in the background. You see that? These two clowns, I don't know what this clown number one is with the blue tie or clown number two with the red tie, but, you know, this. what is this thing about um, second generation people hating immigrants or really finding, you know, out of all the things to look at, they seem to be the ones preoccupied with the immigration. <laughs> and then, <laughs> And then the brother, <laughs> the brother is next to him, and he's, <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I mean, it is confusing. Maybe if that's the goal, to set off confusion. All right, let's see here. So Donald Trump and I had our first debate. I believe we owe it to the voters to have another debate. <laughs> because this election and what is at stake could not be more important. On Tuesday night, I talked about issues that I know matter to families across America, like bringing down the cost of living, investing in America's small businesses, protecting reproductive freedom, and keeping, and keeping our nation safe and secure. But that's not what we heard from Donald Trump. Instead, it was the same old show. That same tired playbook that we've heard for years with no plans for how he would address the needs of the American people, because you know it's all about him, it's not about you. Well, folks, I said it then, I say it now, it's time to turn the page. Turn that page. Turn that page. That was Vice President Kamala Harris in Charlotte, North Carolina. It wrapped up about 40 minutes ago, 30 minutes ago, saying this, quote, we owe it to the voters to have another debate. We should share with you that while she was saying that in North Carolina, Donald, Donald Trump doesn't want another debate. Trump took to Truth Social to say, no, 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 not again. He does not intend to debate her again. And this is just in. The Harris Walls campaign raised $47 million in the 24 hours following the debate. Joining us to talk about it all, senior advisor and spokesperson for the Harris Walls campaign, Ian Sams is here. So the New York Times um, has that reporting under this story, quote, $47 million flowed into Harris campaign in the 24 hours after the debate. Um, it may be obvious, but there is something. It may be obvious, but there is. Two nights ago. Forty-seven million again. Forty-seven this million. Is just in the Harris Wall. Forty-seven million flowed into Harris campaign in twenty-four hours after the debate. Damn! Can you believe that? Forty-seven million in twenty-four hours after the debate. Walls campaign like raised forty-seven million dollars in the twenty-four that's, hours following the, the debate. Joining us to talk about it all, senior advisor and spokesperson for the Harris Walls campaign, Ian Sams is here. So the New York Times um, has that reporting under this story: "Quote: Forty-seven million dollars flowed into Harris campaign in the twenty-four hours after the debate." That's um, a lot of money. It may be obvious, but there is something. Um, if you believe in the old sort of laws of, of politics, which I don't know that they apply to anything anymore, but Trump should want another chance. It's clear that he was so outmatched that he said, you know, uncle, no, thank you. What do you, <laughs> what do you make? Is there any, is there any way to, to try yeah. to keep this on the table as another opportunity for her to simply reach that size audience again? Well, thanks for having me. And I think that the, uh, uh, the the word that we're getting out of the Trump campaign over the last 24 hours has been kind of all over the place. 
uh, Jason Miller yesterday saying that that they would do one. President Trump today uh, saying that there will be not there will not be one. So who knows where they're going to go? I think the vice president has said uh, very clearly that the American people deserve a second chance to hear from them. You know, you mentioned the the, the large grassroots enthusiasm we got in the 24 hours after that debate, raising 47 million dollars. But it's from 600,000 individual people in 24 hours. I think it speaks wow. to the energy and enthusiasm that exists out there in the country for the vice president right now. And it's in 24 hours. I think it speaks to the energy and enthusiasm that exists out there in the country for the vice president right now. And it's so important that we 600,000 individuals. 600,000 people came up with 40 something million. 600,000 individual people in 24 hours. I think it speaks to the energy and enthusiasm that exists out there in the country for the vice president right now. And it's so important that we have that because Trump and Trump's campaign and the Trump MAGA world are billionaire super PAC funded. They've got a, a lot of resources at their disposal to come at the vice president over the next 50 days with attacks and smears. And we have to have the resources to fight back and harness this energy and enthusiasm that we're seeing in the from the debate and even before uh, in order to get her message out and talk more about these issues that really matter to people like you just played in that clip. In uh, the couple polls that have been out since the debate um, show really good movement for you. But I wonder what the campaigns, where is your head on polls? Do you do you wish they all had you tied? Do you, are you heartened to see the movement? I mean, where, how, do you, how do you guys internally deal with polls and what do you want people to take from them? We see this as a margin of error race, a 50-50 race. We're a divided country right now. President Trump obviously has a lot of support among Republicans and, and enthusiastic support in the MAGA base. Uh, but, you know, the vice president is working really hard to change that dynamic. You talked a little bit earlier about the broad coalition that she's building. Hundreds of Bush, Romney, McCain alumni who are coming out as Republicans, courageous Republicans who are putting country over party to back her in this race. Alberto Gonzalez, the former attorney general for President Bush, who I know you work for as well, uh, out this morning saying, Donald Trump represents a real threat to the rule of law in this country, and Vice President Harris has spent her career defending it. I mean, there's momentum building right now for a broad coalition of people who are ready to turn the page on Trump and chart a new way forward with the vice president. I think polls will go up and down, but at the end of the day, it's a 50-50 race. That's why it's so important that uh, you know Democrats who are enthusiastic about the debate on Tuesday night understand that we have a lot of hard work to do. We need people to sign up to volunteer. We need people to go to KamalaHarris.com and chip in a few more bucks if they can so that we can fight back against that MAGA smear machine. And so that's what we'll be doing in the coming days, even as polls may fluctuate up and down. What are the best and most tangible things you hope that the Taylor Swift endorsement and message brings to the campaign? Well, it's interesting, you know, we talk about, uh, you know, former Republican luminaries, including a former Republican vice president, former Congresswoman Liz Cheney. The coalition spans from them all the way to Taylor Swift. You know, Taylor Swift represents something really meaningful for so many people across this country, uh, especially, frankly, women who really identify with her. And we are so proud to have her support. The vice president is so proud to have her support. And for her to speak out takes courage. It takes courage when you're uh, someone with her stature and her audience to step out and say that this election means something really significant for the country and we can't stay quiet and, and people need to go vote. Uh, you know, I think it's part of uh, the example of the kind of future that the vice president. Yeah, I actually sent sent in for my ballot, um, my overseas ballot. So, you know, everybody vote. If you don't know how to vote, go to this uh, link here in the chat and uh and register it's that simple um let's see what else is going on harris here. new polling shows harris has widened her lead the new reuters ipsos poll found the vp is up by five points with harris at 47 percent against trump's 42 hey, percent the same polling from late last month showed harris with a 45 to 41 percent lead both candidates were back on the campaign trail yesterday after a day off 
for 9-11 ceremonies. Mm. So here to talk That's about this week in politics, let's bring in our political panel, Leslie Sanchez and Joel Payne. Leslie is a CBS News political analyst and a Republican strategist. And Joel is a CBS News political contributor, Democratic strategist, also the chief communications officer for Move On. Welcome, welcome. I get you guys twice in one week. What a treat. Um, Leslie, <laughs> we're going to start with you. Uh, former President Trump said after uh, debating President Biden in June and then Harris this week, he's done with debating uh, rally goers, uh, debating. Uh, CBS News spoke to some rally goers uh, who said that Trump should focus more on, I guess, whatever the task at hand is. I want to play some sound. If, if I could stand in front of Trump right now, I would just say concentrate on your wins. Forget about everything that she's doing. Just talk about what you do, what you do, what you do best, how you're going to get in front of Trump. Yeah, is, she's giving Trump some advice. Listen to this advice, y'all. It's funny. About what you do. What, I would just say concentrate on your wins. Forget about everything that she's doing. Just talk about what you do, what, do what you do best, how you're going to get in front of people, what your platform is, because he'll win on that. I mean, even some of his supporters, some of the people at his, very ra at his rallies thought he didn't do so, so well in the debate, um, despite what you're hearing from, Trump, you know, some other pundits. But Trump thinks he's doing excellent. He thought he won the debate. It's, um, what do you think? Do you think it's a bad? Was is it a good idea or a bad idea for him not to get back on the debate stage? It's a good question, Anne Marie. It's a bad idea for him, but you know what? He has no choice because as the as the ship sinks, he's going to try to grab onto Kamala's coattails any way possible because all the momentum will be with her. The crowd is with her. Basically, the crowd is picking up, too. And it reminds me of Bill Clinton's adage, strong be and wrong beats weak and right. Mm -hmm. And in many cases, uh, the vice president looks very <laughs> strong, though people would argue her policies were wrong. And it, it was a very weak idea. performance for the former president. It did not help Indeed, him in the standings. Right. And more importantly, it didn't help independent, independent voters Trump, or people that, that are on the fence because it didn't talk about the economy. It didn't talk about debt. Um, so everyone was frustrated. I think the viewers were frustrated, the voters, the candidates, with the exception of the Harris campaign, you know, who, who clocked that. He, he, it's so funny, his psychology on that. He, he flipped it all around. Like the one who loses the boxing match is the one asking for the rematch, right? That's what how he tried to put it. So in other words, Kamala lost because she's saying, calling for a second debate. No, buddy. In debates, when somebody's calling you for a debate, it means a second debate. <laughs> Does it mean they're losing? Does it mean that? It could also mean that they they know you're scared and will say no. And so they're going to ask you anyway. What about that possibility? You know, um, yeah, Trump, he's going to stay in the narcissistic bubble the whole ride down. Basically. That is a win. I think the realities are. It's, it's an incredibly tight race right now. Those battlegrounds are where they need to spend their money and their time. And the, the risk assessment. I heard he ain't spending no money on the ground. I heard he don't have no poll workers. I heard he's not rallying the vote. He's, he doesn't have people going out there registering people. That's what I heard. He hasn't spent no money or very little money. That's what I heard. Um, is I heard Dems are outspending Republican uh, Trump on the ground. And, uh, and people are saying, OK, where's the money? Is Trump, Trump going to actually prepare for a debate the way that he needed to command a debate the way that he needed to and put that time? How, how many of y'all think Trump has already already uh, decided or he already knows he's going to lose and he's just playing this out the best way for himself, like to raise money, raise whatever money he can um, in the next month or two, right? Two months. Um, how many of y'all think that he's really trying to vote or really trying to run? Uh, to become president. You know, is it just to raise money? Yeah. I'm into it when the clock is really ticking. Yeah. I don't think it's a win for the campaign right now. Um, and then they're going to say, you know, uh, partisan basis that, you know, did uh, and all these issues about the moderators kind of disrupting the debate. That's going to frustrate the campaigns as well. So that's 
part of the reason they came to that decision. Uh, so, Joel, uh, you know, talking about spending time in these battleground states, uh, VP Harris certainly riding the momentum, uh, the wave of momentum uh, since her debate. She is in the state of, including she went to the state of North Carolina, and, and apparently there was quite a turnout there. We're talking about more than 17,000 people in Greensboro. I want to play some sound from that rally. I mean, it, it, it's, I, I'm thinking back to the debate and her comments on Trump's rallies. Um, that's a lot of people. I don't think they were bust in. Um, what do you make of the momentum? What is the best way so for the vice president to use this moment? You know, so, what, <laughs> Trump, that is so funny. They were bust in. He heard they were bust in. I mean, OK, but even if they were bust in, what is it? Why didn't you bust people in? <laughs> I mean, that's the whole point, to get people in there to support you. That's the point, right? But does it matter how you get them in if they support you? I mean, that is like a mind game Trump is on. Yeah, I can promise you they weren't bust in. My parents were two of the people who tried to go, and they couldn't get in because it was at capacity. So I know firsthand uh, they had a lot of folks there in Charlotte and Greensboro and North Carolina. Um, look, there's a lot of momentum there. and. I think, you know, this even ties to the debate topic that we were just talking about. Something that Harris has done so well that I think Biden struggled with is competing with Trump in the attention economy. Donald Trump um, usually is able to own and to manage the media narrative because he is all encompassing and all dominant in all platforms. And I think Kamala Harris has really competed with him and gone toe to toe there by creating these giant rallies and these large scale moments where people see the momentum. She's also done such a good job of not just saying it, but showing it, right? There's one thing to talk about joy, to call the other side weird. It's another thing to demonstrate it, to show it both with your behavior and also how you're using your resource to demonstrate what the other side is doing. Those are two really innate political skills um, that I think have frankly surprised maybe a lot of Democrats who did not know that Vice President Harris had this within her. And, and I think that she's going to need this in spades if she plans on winning this election this fall. But, you know, you know, joy and vibes, and obviously it's working for the VP, but we're still kind of short on, I think, a lot of details um, in terms of her policy. I think everyone can agree that we need more affordable housing. Every time I hear her say that, my follow-up question is, well, how? how? How is that going to happen? You tell me, Joel, because you're, you know, you would be advising a candidate. I mean, is it time to give us more details, to give us the how, or what she's doing is working? The fundraising is going swimmingly well. Maybe this isn't the time to give us a little, a few more details about how she plans to pull off some of her promises. Well, I think what a candidate in her position needs to do is everything. Mm. You, need you know, <clears throat> it's interesting because Trump has been running for office for a lot, it's a long time. What's his policy? He says it's not Project 2025, but what's his policy? Where is it at? And then uh, Kamala Harris, she just becomes the nominee recently, you know, and and the pressure is supposed to be on her to release, you know, what is her entire plan? Um, me, I want to hear it also. I want to hear more. I've heard a lot and I know a lot already. Don't forget um she's been the vice president for many years and she's spoken publicly on many topics so you know usually what the politicians speak on publicly is is part of their policy you know the way they see things i mean so um i already have a great idea about kamala harris but how she lays it out in the next month or so i think it's like a month and a half left right there's a lot of time it's a lot of time Need to do the excitement the enthusiasm the momentum you also need to do the details you also need to do the infrastructure building to make sure that in these states you can take advantage of the momentum you have to do it all and the good thing from a democratic perspective is i do think she's doing that she did that big interview a few weeks Look ago at with the national outlet wow. she's done so, so that means the polls are already starting to reflect that too okay because i know a lot about her um there's a lot of people that speak about her like they don't know anything about her record like they can only pick two things out of it. Now, currently, the administration that she's a part of now has some big things that have been held up in court. And soon, I think it 
March, one of the deadlines is up. You're going to hear more about one big, uh, the, what is it? The Rescue Plan Act for 2021. You're going to hear something from the court. It's been stalled in the courts um, since since 2021. So, and there's another big, um, something else people are going to hear from regarding the courts. So, and this administration, so including Kamala Harris. So folks, you know, don't be duped. If you don't know about anything positive about Kamala Harris, it's because you've really been working hard to not know, you know, you can, she has an extensive long record, uh, you know, but in any case, let's other listen. interviews with um, niche um, African-American um, outlets um, since then. Um, obviously, she had the debate. She's doing these big rallies. She's releasing policy at her own pace. Let's remember, she has only been the presumptive nominee for less than two months and the official yeah. nominee for less than a month. Um, yes. I think she's at a, uh, a very, very um, accelerated pace here for any nominee in modern history. So I actually think yeah. she's moving at the People need to be reasonable, you know? Pace that you would expect her to move at, but it's working. Wh regardless of whatever Fast. myself or another pundit, a uh, great thinker like Leslie might think, it's working for her. She's plus seven or eight. She, she's entered the race. That means whatever she's doing is working. So that is my advice to her. Keep doing what's working. <laughs> right. Just All because right. you rise like a balloon doesn't mean it can't be popped. I mean, let's keep it in perspective and grounded. We're selecting a president and the leader of the free world, and we can't do just a copy and paste of the Biden uh, position, which is what the Trump campaign released today as a new ad, saying it's the same four more years of the Biden economy. That's where, Anne-Marie, your point, there's not enough distinction for- Well, you have to be willing to listen to um, when she speaks about her policy. Uh, you know, I think, obviously, she's with the same party so that comes with being from the same party um having a lot of agreement in policy but that doesn't mean her policies are exactly the same for example the counter argument is what trump makes a lot he says that they copied his stuff the tariffs uh he trump says that biden and harris didn't change the tariffs that he put in that's not true they changed and altered them and and made exceptions also in many cases to Trump's um, own plan that he effect, put in effect, right? So they didn't they didn't rip it down. They just altered it in many ways, though significant ways. And but Trump's argument is is that they didn't take it all the way away, you know. So no matter what you do right now, people are going to criticize. She has the lead. She's taking the initiative. Her audience is growing. That means she's doing something right. So voters to say this is different from Bidenomics. And that's where I think people are going to decide in 50 days. All right, Joel, Leslie, great talk. Yeah, 50 days. And we're going to talk a lot in 50 days. That's a month and a half, right? Give you guys, you guys have a great weekend. Take care. All right. Yo. We're just 50. I'm out, y'all. I appreciate everybody for coming through Break Room. What's up, Andrea Marquis, the Republican? Yeah, um, I might hop back later on tonight. Uh, but it was cool to come in for a second and just check out the latest. Um, yeah, but but I'll be back later on. I'll catch up with y'all. Peace. Lux, lux.